closer to those animals. We don't want to disrupt their peace. We're the guests in their homes today, so it's important that we stay respectful. <laughs> now up above your head is an animal spotting guide to help you identify the creatures we might see. I won't be able to stop for all of them, so just keep that in mind and have your cameras and cell phones out and ready. Now our journey will begin here in the little Aturi forest where animals will use their camouflage to protect themselves from predators. seen they are and they're the heaviest of the forest antelope weighing between 600 to even 900 pounds sometimes then to our right there are the greater kudu you can tell that those are females because the females don't have any horns on their heads unlike the males now we've already seen a couple of animals out there in the forest now so let's start making our way out let's try to see if we can find any more towards the Safi River. This means though that we'll be seeing more aquatic environments, so keep your eyes peeled on the water. Sometimes our friends like to hang out at the bottom of the riverbed. I do see up ahead here to our right are some of the pink backed pelicans. They get their name from their pink coloration that appears on their back during mating season. They are colonial nesters, meaning that they nest in groups of about 20 to 500 pairs. Then to our left here, you'll see the Nile hippopotamus. There's even one submerged underwater there. Actually, two of them. They tend to stay underwater to help prevent their bodies from overheating. Now, when they're born, they're about 85 pounds, and they'll mature to be about 5,500 pounds. And because of that, they oh, actually wow. don't. Many of us would think that they swim, but they don't. They walk and run at the bottom of the river. Tree. 
baobab tree can stay leafless for about nine months out of the year to conserve water in its trunk. So many of the animals here on the savannah will use their horns and tusks to poke holes into the baobab to get the water out, especially during a dry season. And because of that, many people also like to refer to the baobab as the tree of life, as you probably have heard of before. And another reference to it is also known as the upside down tree, because, you know, it looks like the roots are on the top. Now, I heard that right around the corner here, we actually have some animals in the road. So that's a good sign that those animals in the savannah here are active now. Um, the animal that's in the road is the Ancoli cattle. So you can look up, up above your head and kind of have a visualization until we get closer. They have these really, really long horns on their heads. So sometimes they block the road, so we're not able to proceed any further. But I do see some animal assistants out there kind of probably gonna bribe the food the, with bribe the animal with some food to move out a little bit but we'll just hang tight here until the warden gives us that clearance but given that i already see a couple out here from where i am that's a good sign that we'll see some more some of you might even be able to see through the windshield there's a giraffe walking by but don't worry, we'll see them a lot closer in a minute. I think those trucks are starting to move now, so I'll push forward a little bit here. Ooh, okay, so I see an animal coming up here to our left. I think it's walking away. Hold on one second. It's in the pink bushes. It is the sable antelope right there. I'll drive by so everyone can try to see. We might find more. Uh, they live to be about 17 to 18 years old in the wild and they have these horns that will arch all the way back and that's to help deter predators from jumping on their backs. Now here are those Maasai giraffes I was talking about here to our right. You'll see another sable antelope next to them right over there as well to your right. Now they're the tallest animals in the world. When they're born, they're about six feet, and they'll reach heights of 18 to 20 feet tall. Their long legs will help them travel at about 30 miles an hour over a short distance, and they can cruise at about 10 over a long distance. And there's that sable antelope one last time there to your left. Oh, and also in between the trees here to our left is the Patterson's Eland. They're the Ooh. tallest of the antelope species. Some of them will even stand about six feet at the shoulder alone. Oh, here to our left, you'll see some of the African wild dogs. They're also known as the painted dogs for their unique patchwork on their furry coats. They're able to identify one another up to about a mile away. And they are Africa's most successful hunters with about a 90% success rate. That's because they'll pursue their prey in groups until it drops from exhaustion. Now here to our right is the Ancoli cattle I was talking about just a minute ago. It was blocking the road. Their horns will grow to be about three to four feet, helping the cattle eat in their blood circulation and regulating their body temperatures. They're also known as the Watsusi cattle, which is named after the tribe who first domesticated them. if they're large enough, another place to hide from predators. Now, the giraffes love to eat all day long. They only sleep for maybe about 30 minutes a day, not even all at once, and that's usually to help prevent being vulnerable towards other predators that could be in the area. You can see that one to your right, using its 16 inch long tongue, to reach for those leaves at the top of the tree. Their tongues are also prehensile, which means that they use them kind of like how we use our own hands, by picking those leaves off one by one. And their saliva is a lot thicker in consistency to help protect its mouth. 
so many thorns found on the trees as they're eating. Springboks. Springboks are South Africa's national animal and the mascot to many sports teams in the country because they are the top 10 fastest land mammals in the world. They'll reach speeds of 50 to 60 miles an hour and as their name suggests they can spring up into the air about 6 feet high and leap forward 13 feet. We also saw a wildebeest walking by but I see a couple more up ahead. Now another common name for the wildebeest is also known as the new, and that's because of the sound that they make. It's kind of like how a cow says moo, they say new. They're the largest, most densely packed herd of mammals after us humans migrating at about 500 to 1,000 miles each and every year in herds as large as 1.5 million of them. They're also able to stand and walk about 15 minutes after they're born. Now the savannah is home to millions of migrating animals each and every year, so what we find out here today will vary and change based on their sleeping and their migration patterns. See a couple of knocked over trees here, which could be a sign that we're entering some elephant territory. And I think I see one come up ahead here to the right. You can tell that it's the African elephant by the shape of its ear as it looks like the continent of Africa. We're gonna pull around the corner here so that way you guys can see him a little bit better. You can see that this guy's eating right now. They eat about 300 pounds of food a day. Male elephants tend to be a lot more solitary and independent versus the female and their young who like to stay in larger herds. So we're gonna try our best to see if we can catch up to another group. Now one way that you can help some of these animals is by doing one thing and that's recycling. And one thing you can recycle are small electronics or cell phones. And that's because many of these animals live on lands that are mined for a key mineral known as coltan, which is used to make our own cell phones more small and powerful. By recycling them, you can help to preserve and protect your lands little by little every single day. Now we're passing through the red clay pits here. Gives me a feeling we might be getting closer to the, to the other elephants. They hold a great significance in their lives because the elephants will eat at the clay in order to obtain important nutrients and minerals that they don't necessarily get in their everyday diets. Now usually we'll find them over here to the left. Oh, I see some up ahead. to pick up objects that could be as heavy as 600 pounds. Now on warmer days, sometimes you'll find the elephants flapping their ears back and forth. It helps to keep their body temperatures down about 15 degrees cooler. They also have very sensitive skin, so you'll commonly see them throwing mud and dirt on their bodies, using it kind of like a natural sunblock.
Now here to our left, we have a little island that's filled with the greater flamingo. They're the tallest of their species. They'll stand at about five feet on average, and they're also the lightest shade of pink because when they're born, they're the color gray. And over time, their feathers are gonna change and turn pink based on their diets, which primarily consist of tiny brown shrimp and other water creatures that are high in carotene. Now, as we continue through this side of the savanna here, we've had some pretty good luck so far. So just keep your eyes out amongst the vegetation, like the bushes and trees, because sometimes the friends over here like to hang out in those more shaded areas. So they can be a little tricky to spot at first, but we'll try to make sure that we can point everything out to the best of our ability. Looks like we got some white rhinos coming up here to our left in just a bit. the little baby right there. When they're born, they're about 100 pounds, and they'll mature to be about 4,000 to 5,000 pounds. You can also tell they're the white rhinos by the shape of their mouth. It's a lot wider and square shaped, while the black rhino has a pointed prehensile upper lip. Now you see the one in the back there running. They can charge up to about 35 miles an hour. Also to our right here, we have the bond spot. They live to be about 17 years old. In the 19th century, there was only about 17 bonza box left in the world. The number has gone quite a, gone up quite a bit. It's about 3,500 right now, but you know, obviously they're still working on that number there. Now over here to the left, you'll see some cheetahs. There's one at the very top, um, roaming around. Cheetahs are the fastest land mammals in the world, reaching speeds of 60 miles an hour in about three seconds. They have those black tear marks that are going to run from their eyes down to their mouth to help reflect the glare of the sun as they're running. The cheetah is also diurnal, meaning they're most active during the day. There's that rhino once again there to your right. And something pretty cool about them, if you pay, pay close attention, they have these little hairs on their ears. The hairs help to amplify sound, so their sense of hearing is really good, but their sight is not as much, and they only see about 10 feet ahead of them. Now everyone, we are coming up on the Kopi here. The Kopi is the little island of rocks you see to help give lions the best overlook of the savanna and to watch for their territory. It looks like I see the lioness over here in the front. We're going to try to find the, the lion around the Kopi when we make our way. Um, but in the meantime, the lioness, she does the majority of the hunting for the pride. While the lion will stay behind watching over his cubs in the territory. And it looks like all three of them are right there. Wow. <laughs> try to make my way around here so everyone can see them. That's a, that's a crazy picture right there. It's just sitting there. Unlike other big cat lines, only have about a 30% success rate while hunting. Given they're more of a power driven animal versus oh, speed. Yeah. They'll rest about 16 to 20 hours a day. They are nocturnal. So it probably will be bedtime very, very soon. Swahili means foolish. But don't be deceived, they're very intelligent animals as they're relatives to the domesticated pig. They're some of the largest burrowing animals. You can see those holes in the ground there. They're also very territorial. If you look at their face, you can actually identify between the males and females. 
Uh, the males will have four warts, while the females have two. Now, coming up to our right shortly, on the floor, there are some ostrich eggs. Those will weigh about three pounds each. Ostriches are the largest birds in the world. Make sure you're staying fully seated, please. Thank you. They don't fly, but they do run at about 40 miles an hour, using their large wings to help steer and change their direction as they run. Please watch your hands, arms, feet, and legs. The sliding doors are opening now. 